welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. My name is Amanda. Hey guys, and I'm Jenna. We're both giraffe keepers here. Uh, lucky enough to work with these tall blondes, and we wanted to tell you a little bit about them today. So with us here today, we have our herd that's here at the zoo. Um, the two that are up eating browse with Jenna and myself are Tessa and Cece. Uh, these are both female. They're the oldest in the herd. Tessa is with me. She's 13 years old and her son, if you can see him, <laughs> kind of eating, <laughs> is Fennessy. Fennessy is nine months old. He was just born last summer in June. Cece is nine years old and her calf, Theo, is our youngest, if you can see him way in the back. Theo is four months old um, and he's a little shy. And then we have Zoe, who's off to the right back in the back. Also, she is three years old. She was also born here as well. These guys are Maasai giraffe. <laughs> um, there are nine subspecies of giraffe in the world. Uh, these guys can range anywhere from about 1,200 pounds to 2,500 pounds in weight, depending on if they're male or female. Tessa and Cece are right around 1,500 pounds. Fennessy here in the middle is at like 600. Um, and little Theo in the back is around 335. So a common uh, question that we get about giraffes, as you can see, we are feeding them browse. Um, what do giraffes eat? In the wild, these guys are browsers. So that means they eat mostly trees and bushes um, as opposed to grazers like a zebra or a rhino uh, that would eat grass. So these guys primarily eat trees. What they're eating right now is acacia, which is actually their favorite that they get here at the zoo. It is also what they eat naturally in the wild. Um, <laughs> acacia trees are known to have really thick thorns on them. Uh, a couple adaptations that giraffe have for their eating habits are their tongues and their saliva. If you can see their tongues when they're sticking them out, trying to wrap it around all the branches, you can see that it's dark in color. Um, giraffe eat about 70 to 80 pounds of food a day. Uh, they're awake about 20 hours of the day, so they hardly sleep. So their tongues are out in that sun most hours of the day. So it's that purple color to prevent them from getting sunburned. The other thing I was talking about is their saliva. Their saliva is very thick because they do eat primarily acacia. Uh, sometimes they'll swallow those thorns or get them in their mouth and that really thick saliva helps keep their mouths protected and their throat protected as well. So here at the zoo, they get not only browse, but they get a variety of different things. If you've ever been to the zoo and fed our giraffe, you've been giving them lettuce, which we'll feed them once this stuff runs out. Uh, they also get alfalfa hay, they get a nutritionally complete grain, uh, and they also get produce. So they get things like sweet potato, pears, carrots, and apples. So that was very scary, apparently. <laughs> what? He showed us his tongue. <laughs> it's your turn. So our giraffe are really incredible animals. Uh, you probably know this, but they are the tallest animal um, on earth. So these guys, I think Amanda mentioned, but they can get up to about 17 or 18 feet tall. That would be really tall for a, a male giraffe, but they can get that tall. And um, you might wonder how many vertebrae they have in their neck in order to have such a long neck. And actually, these guys have the same number of vertebrae as we do, so they have seven, which is kind of incredible if you think about it. Theirs are just really, really big. They're about 10 inch long bones each, so that's how they get such a long neck. And because their neck is so long, they have to have a really, really strong heart to pump all the blood up to their brain and throughout their body. So their heart is the size of a basketball and weighs about 25 pounds. So that's pretty incredible if you think about it. Um, these guys are, <laughs> Ben's checking out the list, so I'll go grab that. These guys are actually much smarter than a lot of people think or give them credit for. So our two primary trainers, Amanda and Teresa, have actually been working with our giraffe to keep them nice and healthy. And we do things like x-rays on their feet. We um, can actually work on their feet to keep them nice and um, trimmed and in good shape, as well as things like blood draws. So it takes a lot of work to get an animal that's considered a prey animal uh, to trust and be willing to do a lot of different things and see scary things. So we work really hard at introducing them to novel um, things like x-ray machines. And while they're training, they'll actually use 
a cardboard box that's painted just like the x-ray machine so that the vet techs don't have to be here every time they do a training session, but it does help the giraffe get used to those things. The reason that giraffe have to get used to things, or one of the reasons other than being a prey animal, is those giant eyes. So they can see really, really well. And out on the savanna, they're kind of like the watchdogs. If they notice lions or hyenas moving in, they'll take off running and the smaller animals like the zebra and the gazelle watch the giraffe. And if the giraffe are taken off, that's a really good sign they should also start running. So giraffe are kind of like uh, the sentinel of the savanna. Zoe is joining us now behind Amanda. Uh, she's our three-year-old that you probably haven't gotten a good look at yet. Uh, she is very much into food, so I'm surprised she hasn't joined us sooner here. Um, but we mentioned that these guys are very smart, so we also, and use their tongues all day long, so we also work really hard to give them a lot of enrichment. And you might have noticed if you've been here before or I'm looking up around the yard that we do have kind of weird looking things hanging, devices with holes in them. And we use those to um, kind of stimulate the giraffe, get them working their tongues. They are ruminants, so they have a four chambered stomach that actually helps them digest all of the fibrous leaves and bark and twigs and everything that they're eating. And um, so the enrichment keeps them busy, makes them use that tongue. It is prehensile. I'll try and get you guys a a good look at it and um, you'll notice that it if anybody watched Rico the porcupine uh, he has a prehensile tail and giraffes have a prehensile tongue so that's pretty amazing it's used to wrap around um, different uh, trees and sticks and twigs that they are eating and pull off those leaves If you guys have any questions, go ahead and send those in to us. Uh, we would love to answer any questions you might have. Riley wants to know, why are their necks so long? That's a great question. So, these guys are eating trees and leaves, and they have to be really tall to reach up into those trees and get the leaves. Uh, the trees are actually pretty amazing and they can produce chemicals um, that make their leaves taste bad if a herd of giraffe eat their leaves for too long. So that's an adaptation that the trees have um, and so that makes it safer for the trees so the giraffe doesn't eat an entire tree and kill it off all at once. Um, but it also allows them to get the, to the tippy top leaves that are left because they will eat all day long. Uh, they're probably eating about 75 to 100 pounds of food a day. And um, you can imagine that would kind of take out a tree pretty quickly. <laughs> John wants to know if they're endangered. Actually, these guys are now endangered. Um, they have recently had a lot of issues with habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, um, poaching, wars, all sorts of things, mostly that are caused by humans. So unfortunately, the giraffes um, now are considered endangered and we celebrate them every year on June 21st, the longest day of the year, the World Giraffe Day. And um, something that you guys can do to help is recycle plastic gift cards or hotel cards or um, like a Kroger card. If you're no longer using those, you can actually recycle them at Best Buy. And this way we don't have to mine for as much petroleum, which is what those uh, cards and that plastic is made out of. So if you guys want to help giraffe, it's a really good way to do it. Um, and one of the reasons that they are currently endangered. Joe wants to know how you tell them apart. So the biggest way that we tell them apart is by their spots. Um, for those of us that work with them every day, it's very easy for us to just look at them and know. Um, but primarily we go by the markings on their chest. So if you can see the middle of Tess's chest here, it kind of looks like a pie shape. That's how we can tell her. Cece actually has a letter C on her side, on her left on side. Her left side. <laughs> um, she's also the darkest, yes. which is really, um, if you are comparing them next to one another, that makes it pretty easy to tell Cece. Zoe out here chewing on some hay and stuff. Her ossicones are very, very fuzzy. Um, and then obviously the two boys are the small ones. Fen is the bigger of the two. And Theo, just like Cece, is also darker in color as compared to Fen. Can you tell everybody how old um, they are again? I think some people missed the beginning of this. Sure. Uh, Tessa here in the middle is our oldest giraffe. She is 13. Cece over here eating these uh, brows is nine. Zoe is three. 
Fennessy is nine months old and will be one on June 17th. And then Theo back in the back is only four months old. He was born November 23rd. Something really crazy about giraffe is when they're born, they're actually about six feet tall and anywhere between 125 to 150 pounds. So they're very, very large, but also they drop from their mothers who give birth standing up. So they have a six foot drop to the ground and it definitely gets everything stimulated and going, all that blood flow and they're breathing. Um, and it's pretty, pretty cool to see and it takes 15 months so their gestation is 15 months long and they come out very large much larger than the average human actually danny wants to know how do they sleep standing up so a giraffe can sleep standing up and they also do lay down especially here at the zoo they're a little bit more comfortable with laying down because they don't have predators um but giraffes typically only take short, short naps, but maximum like 20 to 30 minutes, but usually less. But you can imagine laying down is the most vulnerable position a giraffe can be in. And so they typically will be standing. And then also another vulnerable position they um, would be in is if they're drinking water. So they would splay those long legs out and spread them, kind of do the splits and bend down and hang their head really low. And that's the time they would need to worry about crocodiles, hyenas, lions, um, kind of sneaking up on them and catching them off balance. But typically giraffe don't have too many issues with predators if they're an adult. They can run about 30 miles per hour, up to 35 for really short distances. And they can also kick with all four legs in any direction. So um, it's been known to kill a lion the force of their kick. These guys can protect themselves, uh, but they definitely have vulnerabilities if they're laying down sleeping or, or getting a drink of water. Thankfully, they get a lot of the water they need um, from the leaves that they eat. So you won't see them drinking a ton, but here at the zoo, we do have a pond out in their habitat, as well as a drinker on the building that you probably can't see. And then we, they have drinkers inside. So they do drink water and they can drink about a gallon at a time if they're really thirsty. Amelia asked if they eat anything other than leaves. So yes, in the wild, they would definitely eat a lot of twigs and bark. And um, here at the zoo, they do get a little bit of a different diet. We make sure that they get leaves every day, but they're also getting alfalfa hay, a specialized herbivore grain. And um, Amanda mentioned some produce. And one of their favorites is actually beet pulp also, um, which is dry, it comes dry and we soak it and put it in a lot of their puzzle feeders so they have to use their tongue and, and kind of um, work for their food to keep them nice and busy. Maggie wants to know if there are multiple species of giraffe. There are. There are actually nine subspecies of giraffe, and they're all subdivided based on where they live. These guys are known as Maasai giraffe, and they tend to be the largest. Um, a lot of other zoos have what we call reticulated giraffe. Um, their spots look a lot different than the Maasai. If you've ever been to another zoo that have reticulated giraffe, they have more of the boxy shaped uh, pattern on their body as opposed to what we call the maple leaf pattern. Olivia asked if they make any sounds. <laughs> Sometimes. I have not personally heard them. Pretty much these guys are silent on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Jenna can probably fill you in on <laughs> I have heard them. Uh, I think a big myth out there is that giraffes do not have vocal cords, which is not true. Um, they can make a mooing sound, but if a giraffe is unhappy or nervous, um, usually a mother and calf, they can actually roar. It is incredible i don't know if you've ever heard our elephants um our elephants will roar every once in a while also but um a while back we were getting a weight on cora cc's first calf and we so we separated them for just like less than a minute and i heard cc roar and it was incredible so yes giraffe can make noises but they typically do not one of the favorite questions on all of these safaris is if they have a favorite keeper <laughs> You know what, giraffe? We can say who their favorites. We won't say, but we know who their <laughs> favorites are not. Um, but these guys, it's hard to say. They like whoever has the food, typically. Um, Amanda and Teresa definitely work the most with them, doing all of their training and on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a large department here. We take care of all sorts of animals in the Africa area. Watch Chessie. Maybe. Um, but we do have areas that we are primarily at, so my guess would be Teresa and Amanda, but um, it's hard to say. They aren't too, too picky. Chris asked, 
how fast can they run? They can run up to 35 miles per hour for short distances, um, but it would probably be, they could run longer at like 20 miles per hour. You guys can see Tessa's tongue, she is uh, using, <laughs> using it like a hand, kind of wrapping it around like a monkey's tail and eating the whole stick. So they will do that if it's a stick that they really like. That's one of the reasons we have to wrap the trees here at the zoo is because they would eat all of the bark off of the trees and the trees need that bark to survive. It helps move the nutrients through their, through their uh, tree system. I don't know the word for that, but <laughs> the giraffe could definitely eat the bark off of these trees and, and they wouldn't last very long. Kelly wants to know if they can swim. No, they cannot. Uh, giraffe don't tend to like water. Uh, as Jenna said, they don't even need to drink that much water on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so not to my knowledge that they actually get in water, uh, large bodies of water, but I would think the only way they would cross a river is if they had zero options for food and that was, but no, I've never seen a picture of it or heard of it happening. Deer swim though. <laughs> Olivia wants to know how long their tongue is. Oh, that's a good question. I don't think we told, told you guys. So their tongues are actually about 18 inches long. Tessa's showing you right on time. <laughs> um, and again, that's used to reach up into the trees. Uh, once they've eaten all the lower leaves, it's hard to reach up and, and to the uh, tips of the trees. So that tongue actually gives them about a foot and a half extra length uh, to get the food that they need. And can you talk again about why their tongue is the color it is? Yeah, so their tongue is, I say purple, some call it blue, some call it black, but it is a darker color so that it doesn't get sunburned. You can imagine if you were outside all day long, staring up at the sun, sticking your tongue out, re reaching up for leaves, uh, that your tongue could actually get sunburned. So this is a way to protect the giraffe while they're eating in the hot African sun. Oh, I was going to point out that <laughs> Theo was just nursing. So calves will nurse um, up to about a year or more if their moms will let them. I've actually seen other older calves steal milk from moms when they shouldn't be nursing anymore. Um, but Theo is eating solids. He actually really likes grain and beet pulp and um, he will come over and is getting braver and braver. Um, but. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Cece walked away, but he was nursing. He still does nurse, and Ben does also when Tessa loves him. He, he sneaks over there <laughs> while she's eating her grain a lot of, at night. Are giraffes related to any other animal? Giraffes are related to one other animal on the planet. Um, their only living known cousin is called the okapi. The okapi lives in Africa also, but lives in the forest of Africa. If you've ever been to the zoo and have seen the okapi down in the belt, they have a very dark chocolate colored fur and they have the back legs of a zebra. Um, they also have kind of the cones on their heads that these guys have along with that dark purple tongue because the same concept. They, uh, they eat all day long and they're constantly eating trees and bushes of that nature. Do they have good eyesight? They do. Their eyes are very large and as Jenna said earlier, these guys are like the watchdogs of the savanna since they're so tall they can pretty much see um, everything that's coming and so like jenna said earlier if the giraffe typically are on the watch and they take off running it's usually because there's a predator then most of the other animals on the african savannah also know that it's time to get out why do they have such long eyelashes um i would suspect it's because where they live it can get dusty even here at the zoo if you can see the ground it gets dusty here as well some days um just like humans it protects things from getting in their eyes Eve wants to know if they have good hearing. I think so. <laughs> I, I've i never like actually researched the how, how good their hearing is, but they have large ears and they're very tuned in to what's going on around them. So they'll turn their ears um, if they hear something and they're always aware of what's going on. So I would, I would guess they have pretty good hearing. Maggie wants to know if they have teeth. They do, so if you notice, in the front, they actually only have bottom teeth. Let's see if she'll show you. Um, and then in the back, they do have molars. But that's why we say if you come feed the giraffe here at the zoo, you don't have to worry about them actually biting you or, or hurting you. They'll use their tongue to get the most of their food, but they can use the top of their mouth, we call it a palate, and the bottom teeth to scrape things off, which fantasy is kind of try, trying to show you right now. Um, but they'll use that to scrape the leaves and the 
in the bark off of the twigs that they're eating, but in the back they do have um, molars that are really good at breaking down this fibrous food. So we hope you guys enjoyed our home safari with the giraffe. We were really excited to, to share them with you guys. And we're hoping that you will share giraffe of your own with you after this. Um, so if you have a sock or a, a brown paper bag hanging out around home and uh, some other crafty items, we were hoping you can make us sock puppets that look like giraffe. Now don't forget to add the tongue. Maybe you have some ribbon or um, a spatula. I don't know what you have at home, but you can make a, a giraffe sock puppet, put on your own place, take photos, and, and send them in to us. We would love to see what you come up with, probably something better than I ever could. Um, but yeah, we really hope you guys uh, enjoy and try making your own sock puppet giraffe after this.